hear us all speak, and thank you to my fellow contestants for putting up such a good fight. It's going to be a joke, guys. I plan on rolling over. So, I'd like to ask you all to do something for me, real quick. I'd like you to imagine you're a guy named Keith, and I'm sorry, Keith is a criminal, but not a violent one. He's committed the petty crime of credit theft. Because of this, he's given several years in prison. However, his nonviolent crime puts him in a violent situation. For you see, his cellmate comes in at knife point, holds him down with several of his fellow inmates, and rapes him. After this happens, it happens again and again and again, day after day. This becomes a living hell for poor Keith, who just committed credit card fraud, and it's indicative of a problem facing many inmates today. Later, Keith uh, D'Angelo, who I'm talking about, said to the uh, Prison Rape Elimination Commission in 2005 that he contracted HIV from these rapes, commuting his slight sentence to a death sentence. I think many of us can agree that a death sentence for credit fraud is a little exaggerated. And it's indicative of the problem facing America with prison rape in its systems. I propose that the United States government and the Department of Justice improve the laws that are surrounding this issue and improve the methods of protecting the different inmates. We will discuss the harm caused by rape in this country's prisons. And I'll point a big fat finger at the Department of Justice for their failure to protect those who they must. And we'll discuss a solution that is both economic and doable on how we can adjust the situation. Because the Department of Justice should be just that, something that protects justice and symbolizes it in our country. It should not cause injustice upon thousands of people. According to an article by Kevin Corlew for the American Journal on Criminal Law, there are 2.2 million people incarcerated in this country. We take the gold, America, congratulations. And of these 2.2 million, two thirds are nonviolent offenders. However, of the 97% that are returned to our streets, almost all of them will have suffered from some sort of violence while in prison. According to the Department of Justice Statistics, the BJS, nearly 4.5% or 65,000 people have been raped in prison as of this year. 65,000. Some estimates are higher because of stories like that of T.J. Parcells, who told the Prison Rape Elimination Commission in 2005 how he had suffered rape had bled from his rectum profusely for several days before he sought medical help because he was terrified they'd ask him what happened. Because he knew snitches get killed. This silence makes us believe that the statistics are actually much higher than presented by the BJS statistics. As a matter of fact, according to the Corlew article, the Congress has estimated that it's 13%. And over the last 20, uh, 20 years, that's over a million people that have been raped. <coughs> But whether it's a million people or 65,000 people, the point is that thousands of people are being raped in our country, in our very justice system, what's supposed to represent law and order. Of these, 97%, as I previously stated, will be back on the streets. And these people will have 10% higher chances of getting STDs. They'll have higher recidivism and higher mental illness rates. They'll be walking around right next to you and me, and they'll be walking symbols of our failure to guarantee them their Eighth Amendment rights to not have to suffer cruel and unusual punishment. The system is broken, and who do we blame? The Department of Justice. But in addition to that, it's more, it's more than just the indifference Americans give towards the issue. Many of you have probably seen Office <coughs> Space, where they say, don't drop the soap. Or perhaps the movie that's a comedy with Will Arquette, Let's Go to Prison which mocks and makes a laughing matter out of the anguish suffered by all these victims. It's more than just the failure to properly screen guards, of which more than half of the rapes happen in prison from guard on inmate. It's more than just proper tracking of inmates in prisons to properly quarantine those who do actually rape victims. It's in the very laws of the system. The Prison Litigation Reform Act of 1996 was originally intended to eliminate frivolous lawsuits from entering the courts and clogging it down. In practice, however, this has meant that prison rape victims have not been able to bring their cases to court. Proponents will say this saves the American taxpayer, us, $450 an hour for the legal expenses. Or I think many of us will say that justice for a rape case might be worth the cost. I think many of us would be astounded to hear that in order for that case to even go to court, there must have been serious injuries suffered. So if you are raped in prison, 
you better hope you get roughed up or else you won't have a case. Many of us would also be upset to hear that in order for that case to go to court, there must have been an exhaustive effort to fulfill every possible method of alerting authorities within the prison system. In many cases, this means the very guards that have raped prisoners are the ones receiving their complaints, such as the Texas Youth Commission case in 2007, where juvenile inmates, children, had to complain using a complaint box, <coughs> the keys of which were held by the rapist guard. Needless to say, their cries went unheard for quite some time. The system is broken, and as long as these laws persist, it won't be fixed. That's why Judy Kent of the ACLU stated in an uh, address to Congress in 2007 that it is the moral imperative for the uh, force to remove these laws. Because as long as this, these laws persist, the culture of submission within prisons will not change. Pat Nolan, the director of the Primal, uh, Prison Elimination uh, Act, stated that this can be done easily. The PLRA, Prison Litigation Reform Act, simply needs to be reworded to eliminate rape from the list of frivolous lawsuits. I think many of us can agree that rape is not frivolous. It's a very grave issue. And this simple rewording of a law can achieve great change and allow these victims to be heard. Beyond this, the Department of Justice has released its own scathing remarks about itself in 2011, about how they can fix the solution. They just need about $213 million in the first year, and 544 in years preceding, to ad address simple changes, such as monitoring those who they have committed rape within the system and quarantining them, such as providing psychological help for victims to ensure that they do not become violent themselves, such as preventing this from happening with proper uh, methods of allowing inmates to report their abuse. These changes, as long as they achieve a 3.5 decrease in percentage, which is tiny, though it will amount to 16,000 rapes, will pay for itself. Very rarely does the correct moral action align with the fiscally responsible action. However, we have a chance to do the right thing and do the financially responsible thing and protect these victims and actually live up to the legal system's promise. We've discussed how prison rape is a huge problem in the country today and how it's the justice system itself that is to blame and we have an economic and possible solution to fix this problem. Eli Wiesel, a prisoner during the Holocaust said, the opposite of love is not hate, it's indifference. Let's not be indifferent and laugh at movies about prison rape. Let's not ignore their cries. Let's address this problem and let's do the right thing. Thank you.